Okay, it's three o'clock. Let's start the lesson. And we do have an artist in the house who wants to draw something. So it's okay, let him draw. And I can erase. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> now you try to draw. Whoever had that beautiful drawing, you can also say hi to me. Then we can uh, combine our process and teach the next lesson together. So if all of you can hear me, just uh, I hope all of you have, have been using Zoom for a while now, so you know the the way to use it, the protocol, the rules. Okay, no private chatting with other members. So I've actually locked you all out of chatting with publicly, so you can only chat to me if you have any questions. You also cannot draw anymore. And um, if you have questions, you can raise your hand. You can put a thumbs up. So if you can hear me, put a thumbs up right now. Hi. Can all of you hear me? Thumbs up. Good. Welcome to the very first lesson for P3, P4 in science. I'm sure you guys have had a little bit of English and math already. So you know the rules, right? Earlier, if you didn't hear me or you just joined us, welcome and we are going to begin and i know that you know the rules so please stick to the rules and if anybody wants to violate the rules then of course i have the ultimate power to kick you out of the room and not see you again and this lesson is recorded it will be up on the youtube we'll see who the perpetrator is and also next week's lesson will probably lock you out of the lesson so please stick to the rules and we only have exactly one hour from now to end this lesson and give you a little bit of break before your math lesson starts at 4 30 so i don't waste too much time as well so you can have a good, quick break later okay so as you can see all of you can uh, look at the slide that i've shared with you okay today's lesson is going to be on the showdown between bacteria and fungi okay and some of you are in p3 some of you are in p4 i understand that the lesson was prepared for you but However, I do have some guys or um, friends who have joined in from P5 and P6 as well. Welcome to you guys because you just want to revise and do well in your PSA, no problem. Because fungi and bacteria is a topic that needs to be revised again and again to pick up the final points because this is an important part in the diversity okay, theme where PSA questions are usually focused here because we try to pick on the stuff that you have misconceptions on. Okay, so hi to P3, P4, P5, P6, all of you, welcome. Okay, let's start the showdown. Okay, fungi versus bacteria. You may think you know a lot. Okay, how many of you actually tried the questions that I gave you? You can raise your hand or you can put a thumbs up. I can have a look at how many people actually tried the questions and you have the questions beside you. James raised his hand. Who else? Kevin Narayan raised his hand. Only two. Okay. Let's move on. I will be discussing those questions in, in about 20 minutes time. Before that, we need to look at what are the things that we need to take note of? Okay, first up, where are we in diversity? Okay, Dash raised his hand as well. Okay, very good. Where are we in diversity? So I think this is a mouthful. No, a page full. Okay, this is a page full because this is a classification chart. You started out with type of charts in January, in February, in, by April now, you are familiar with a science chart like this. PFOS, you have seen this throughout the whole year, so you are also familiar. And of course, I don't have to say anything about P5 and P6. You guys are very experienced in science already, okay? So this, are you all having a look? I give you like 10 seconds to just have a quick glimpse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, let's start. Where are we in diversity? That's the purpose of this topic, right? Where are we in diversity? Okay, let me just get the pen out. Uh, 
Okay, let me just hide the screen. Because I have some trouble with the subtitles. Okay, anyway, you guys can just have a look at the uh, the page first. Okay. I got it. Okay, I switched it off. Okay, now I was just going to take a pen color and I want to subtitle. All right, now we are on diversity, all right? So you can see diversity over here. Oops. Sorry guys, some tech fault. Hope you guys are not playing with it. Toggle subtitles. Okay, let me just use another method. Let's go through the slide. Can you see the cursor on the screen? Just a thumbs up if you can see the cursor on the screen. I'll use a pointer. Can you? Okay, now you see a red, red dot, right? Can you see? Okay, a red dot on the screen. Okay, so here we are on diversity and things are separated into living things and non-living things, okay? So you have plants, animals, fungi, bacteria. All of you are familiar with the left-hand side already, especially in P3, okay? Some of you have not done the right-hand side non-living things in P3, so that's why I'm not doing the right-hand side today. I'm focusing where? Where the red dot is now? Fungi and bacteria. Because I believe all of you are quite good in plants and animals already. You know what are the type of plants you can name me plants, what are the type of animals you can name me animals, what about the type of fungi and bacteria? Can you name me fungi and bacteria? I need all of you to type in one name of a bacteria and one name of a fungi. Come on, let's go. I've got one answer from Felix, one from Adarva Arya, Kevin, Narayan, Narayanan, Jubi. Okay, very good. So what are the answers that I've got? I've got yeast. I've got Bacillus, I've got mushroom. Yeah, a lot of you say mushroom. Okay, of course you know where. Okay, what is a mushroom part of? Is it a fungi or bacteria? Fungi, very good. Uh, what is um, bacillus part of? Bacteria. Very good. Okay, so you guys are on the dot with this lesson already. Okay, so you know the names. So let me just move on to the next slide and show you some pictures of fungi. We're going to start off with fungi first. Familiar? How many of you are familiar with all the four pictures? Me from Felix. <laughs> okay, uh, one person asked, What is a puffball? I've never seen this in my life. What's a puffball? Puffball is a type of fungi. Obviously, it's on the slide there and the fungi. We are not doing bacteria yet. Like I said, we're going to start with introducing fungi and also the usefulness and some examples and how to distinguish between a fungi and a plant, right? So let's move on to this part. Okay, now students take over. Tell me some differences and similarities to plants. Okay, here. Tell me some differences to plants. Which one is the same as 
a plan. Need to need water, air, and food to survive. Is it a plan? Is it true for fungi as well? Yu Tong, raise your hand. Okay, let me just see if I can give Yu Tong a uh, power to speak. Hang on, guys. Because all of you are muted, I'm going to give Yu Tong the power to speak. Where's Yu Tong? There he is. Unmute. Okay, Yu Tong. Hi. Couldn't hear you, Tom. Okay, let's try again. Oh, anybody else? Because I couldn't hear you, Tom. Anybody else? Juby, would you like to try? Let's see if I can unmute Juby. Yes. Hi, Juby. There you are. Hi. Okay. So we just want to see the difference between the fungi and plants. Can you tell me any part where I can actually find a difference between fungi and plants in this table? Okay. It cannot make its own food. Right. Okay. That was a very good one as well. Okay. Juby said, oh no, yeah. Juby said it cannot make its own food. So let's look at some of the differences. Okay. Here you go. If you look at the plants need air, water, and food to survive, so do the fungi. It's exactly the same because they come from the living things category. So all of them are living things. First, we have to identify that. And therefore, plants will have the five necessary criteria to meet for living things, which is they need air, food, and water. They grow, they respond to changes, they reproduce, they will die, and they will make their own food. Actually, six, right? Okay, six or five. Six. Okay, I counted only six. How many of them are the same for fungi? Only three. They respond to changes and Grow well? No. Grow well in moist and warm conditions only for fungi. So that's the difference. If you see the yellow text, okay, that highlighted the differences. For respond to changes is the same, and for well die is the same. For reproduce, slightly different because the plants can reproduce in many methods, whereas the fungi can only reproduce from spores. Okay. So I left one row empty. What should I fill up there? That's what Juby says, right? Can they make their own food? Can fungi make their own food? This is the ultimate question we always ask you. Can they? That's the way we differentiate between plants and fungi. Okay? So they do not make their own food, but feed on living. So that's how they get their food. They do not make it. And fungi cannot. Because fungi, then we'll ask you, why can't they make their own food? Because they do not have any. C H L O R O P H Y L L, which many of you struggled to spell the first time around. It's chlorophyll. They do not have chlorophyll. So plants do have chlorophyll. Okay. Is there any exception to this rule? Okay. There is. I'm sure when you looked at your questions in the homework, you saw that we have these two plants which are called fern and mosses. These two come together, fern and mosses. They are the exception because they do have spores, okay, but they come under plants. So many of us are confused. Hey, how come they have spores and they're not called fungi? Okay, they do have spores because they come under non-flowering plants. Okay, I will go through this in detail when we are doing the question. Don't worry about that. Fungi can also be found on very common things like bread, which we have at home. How many of you have found mold on your bread before? Okay, means you have not been, wow, nearly all of you are raising your hands because you have not been keeping your bread in a dry place or in a cold place. That means you are allowing the warmth and the moist to grow some fungi because fungi love to grow on, very correct, warm places and wet places. So just remove these two conditions and you are able to keep the 
mold or the fungi away for a longer period of time, which is the easiest thing to do. Just chuck the bread into the fridge, right? If you chuck it into the freezer, which is even better, then it's colder, then fungi can't survive. So that is the picture on the left. What's the picture on the right? If you see a thin black line that extends from the mold to this circular picture, which is the, let me use my pointer again, laser pointer right here. Okay, here you have the mold on a bread, which is the microscopic view. Very good. Okay, some of you realize that I actually used a microscopic image. So you can't see things with your naked eye. You use a microscope to see it in clear, okay, in clarity. And so you see little spores over here. So in similar fashion, we can start discussing mushroom, which is another common thing that we do keep at home to eat, mostly to cook. But when you look at the features of a mushroom, what do you find? You are supposed to find the three what, parts of the mushroom, which are here. What are they called? The cap. Can you type? If you have, I know some of you are very frisky. You want to type right all the time. So I, that's why I'm allowing you to participate. You can type the answer straight away. What are the three parts of the mushroom that you need to know? Good. Still right there, right? All of you are very correct. Cap, gill, stalk. Cap, gill, stalk. Cap, gill, stalk. Except nobody said spores because it's not written there. Spore bag. Laya dashini. Spore bag. <laughs> Okay, where is the spore bag? I don't see it on the mushroom. Okay, type me the answer where? In the gills. Very good. James, very good. Kevin Narayanan. Okay. Kevin Narayanan. Very good. Um, it's in the gills. Okay, so that's why I need the right side picture as well. The right side picture is a microscopic view of the gills. And there you have the spores. You can look at where I'm pointing. All of you can see my laser pointer. The spores are right here. Then what's this basidium and what's hyphae? Okay, these are also names of structures that, okay, these are also names of structures that, of course, we see under the microscope, but not required in primary three, primary four, primary five, primary six, not up to your secondary school. So you don't have to remember those names. I've just put here for your extra information because they are there. Some students ask me, what are these called? So that's why, okay. All right, next slide. All of you seem to be much, much smarter than me because the slides here are very basic stuff, but we need to get, a, get past this basic stuff to get to the questions because I know some of you struggle with the questions, got the wrong answer. You don't know the answers yet. We have to wait for the later part. Let's do yeast. Is yeast part of fungi or bacteria? Come on, type it now, 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 now. Fungi, does it mean we drink yeast? <laughs> Yeast under a microscope. Okay. Bacteria. Cori said bacteria. Laya said bacteria. Lassia said fungi. Bacteria. Now, you see, this is where, if you go to your PSLE or your P4 exam or P3 exam and you start writing down that yeast is bacteria, you're going to get it wrong, right? Why? It's obviously fungi. If you look at the title heading right up here where my laser is going, it says fungi. How come you can't see it? Okay, however, this is a fungi that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Okay, so they are called microorganisms. Hence, they have to be seen by a microscope only. Okay, now many of you know bacteria is the one that can only be seen under microscope. So when you know that yeast is also can also be only seen under microscope, you feel oh that must come under bacteria category. Wrong. Okay, fungi. Some can be seen, some cannot be seen. And therefore, yeast is a type of fungi that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Therefore, you need to use a microscope. Okay, it's very, very, very tiny, so we cannot see it. Okay. And therefore, that brings us to the useful and harmful fungi that we need to know. Okay. It's very, very important to know whether fungi has useful properties or harmful properties. Now, that is also the title of today's lesson. Harmful, useful, let's battle them out. Bacteria versus fungi, who will win? That means uh, who will win means, what does it mean? Who will be more, more useful? Who do you think will be more useful? Bacteria or fungi? Both look yucky. 
both look harmful, yucky, but which one will win? Bacteria is more useful. Adarva said, Laya said, Koi said, Juby said, bacteria is more useful than fungi. Fungi is hopeless. Uh, okay, I will give the answer at the end of this lesson because after all, the lesson's title is fungi versus bacteria. Kevin says, Kevin and Ryan say both equal. Okay, if you know the answer to the question of who will win, then the, this is the end of the lesson. Right, so we don't need to go through this lesson, but we don't know. Hence, you have to pay attention to find out. So, shall we start discovering who is better? So, useful fungi versus useful bacteria. Let's have a look. Mushrooms they provide us food, so we can know so that's one source of food. So, fungi can be useful by providing us a type of food. Yeast is also an ingredient for making bread, which means it's useful as well. To make beer as well, to wine as well, all these are edibles and drinkables, food and beverages. Mold to make cheese, again food, so lots of fungi come in food production. Finally, making of antibiotics. Da, 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 da. What does that mean? Now we are all in the COVID situation, we are thinking about virus all the time. We have infections. Someone who has got COVID-19 will have an infection in his body. He's taking, especially the lungs, is making him difficult to breathe. So the first thing they will try to do is to kill this infection, is to send some fungi down his body to actually fight this infection. And penicillin is the grandmother and grandfather of all antibiotics because it was discovered by a famous scientist whose name I will not reveal now because you can go and find out. Penicillin is the first antibiotic found through the use of fungi. And this fungi could actually cure infections and so it has been widely used in making of antibiotics. There you go, very useful indeed. Now, if this is all the use of fungi, maybe bacteria might win, but <laughs> fungi have more useful as decomposers. And this is the biggest help that they can do for us as a part of earth or in the ecosystem because let's read it together. They play an important role in the nutrient cycle. What does that mean? They, that means they have to break down dead organism into simpler substances and return them to the soil. Dead or alive? How? You don't know yet. I'll come to that in a while. Decomposition produces carbon dioxide that can be used by plants during photosynthesis, which means, you see, they, when, the, when the animals and people are dead, right? Where do our bodies go? Into the ground? Or if you're burnt, it's different if you're into the ground, okay? Slowly you deteriorate, right? Your body becomes decomposed. You know this word, okay? Decompose, meaning it's actually breaking down into simpler substances. One day you will not see any flesh, but the bones cannot decompose, so you'll see the bones. I'm sure you've seen enough movies where they dig the grave and they see only bones, but they don't see the body. Where's the mouth? Where's the nose gone? Okay? Okay, question from James. Can fungi decompose everything, whether it's dead or uh, alive? Sometimes alive uh, organism tissues can also, if it has wet and moist conditions, like I will be going into the next slide where you, have, you, are, you are not showered and you don't, and fungi grows on your body. You are still alive, but you still have fungi on your body. How is that? Okay, it's not decomposition, but it's still having you as food. So that's interesting. So those of you who have not showered today, better go shower later because if not, fungi will grow on your body as well. Especially now that you are not going to school, I don't know how many of you don't shower for days. Okay. So then you will start having fungi growing on you, just like how it grows on the bread. Take my word for it, it will happen. Okay. So parents who have children who refuse to shower, this lesson, you should thank me for it. Okay. They will go shower after this. Okay. So decomposition produces carbon dioxide as well because when the fungi start eating them the gas produced as a result of decomposition is carbon dioxide what can this di carbon dioxide be used for carbon dioxide can be used for do we us do we breathing carbon dioxide or oxygen oxygen right so we give out carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide in the air what is it used for how many of you know what this carbon dioxide is for there's one important use in this ecosystem let's see you type James is the first, Dash is the second. Both say plants. Yes, plants use it for photosynthesis. In order to, for them to make food, 
they need carbon dioxide as an essential element. They need sunlight, they need nutrients, they need water, but they need carbon dioxide in photosynthesis, right? So imagine there's no carbon dioxide in this world. How will plants survive? Or how will they make food? Because the food is what the animals eat, what we eat, and then what we eat. And then we die, we decompose, the fungi uh, act on us, give up more carbon dioxide, more plants grow, and that's a beautiful ecosystem that is produced. So hence, the presence of carbon dioxide is very, very important. And hence, fungi play an important role to produce this carbon dioxide through the process of photosynthesis or through the process of decomposing. Sorry, not photosynthesis, decomposing. Okay, so this slide, I would say, is the ultimate important one. Also, might prove the difference between the winner between bacteria and fungi. But we haven't looked at bacteria yet, so let's go on, okay? I did say we need to look at harmful fungi. For those of you, please take note. Okay, the third one here, I'm going to bring my cursor. Body and skin infections. Example, athlete's food and ringworm can form on your body in areas where they have been dirt for a long time, where it's been wet and moist for a long time. Wet and moist, the same thing, sorry. Wet and moist, the same thing. And warm, okay, if it's warm also, it will form this kind of infection, mainly caused by fungi. Ew, says Phillips, of course, it's ew. But uh, the next time when you start going to school after the holidays, you can go inspect your friends and see if they have fungi on them or not. Very bad, right? Then straight away, pull them to the what toilet, put soap and clean. Now we learn, right? Soap and water cleans viruses, okay? It cleans uh, fungi as well. So that's why you need to shower. Come on, get into the shower. You clean this soap and water. Why do we use soap? For the reason where we can kill bacteria and fungi at the same time. Okay, poisonous. Okay, so these are the harmful. Actually, we, are, we need to know this, but this will not determine who is better between bacteria and fungi, but we still need to know. Okay, decay of food. We already found out that there's mold on bread. Damage of materials like leather. You have, a, have you seen mold on leather? Very similar to mold on bread. Why? Because leather originally came from a living thing, do you know? If you have a leather sofa, leather chair, leather bag, that came from an animal, be it a crocodile, usually crocodiles, sometimes they use whales or sometimes they use what, horse. Do they use horse? Otherwise, other do they use horse? Okay, you have horse leather. Horse skin may be used in a few types of materials, but leather, I'm not sure. Cow, yes. Juby said cow. Cow leather. Snakes, yes. James said snakes, okay. So snake leather, cow leather, what else did I say? Crocodile leather. These are the few I know. You, you guys seem to know goats, bats, okay. I'm getting very interesting uh, responses from Laya, Felix saying bats and goats. And let's go and research ourselves to see where leather comes from. Why did I talk about leather? Because they are after all coming from living things. Therefore, the fungi will say, hey, this animal, this, this cow, this crocodile is already dead. So let me go and feed on him. So that's leather, right? Do we allow that? So why do we buy leather so far then? Immediately. My mom, mom has a lot of leather bags. I'm not going to reveal who said that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why do we buy leather so fast? Firstly, they are very, very tough to be destroyed, easy to take care of and stuff like that. And it's very, very expensive because of course they go after animal skins to do it, which actually by right, we shouldn't buy leather products, right? If you are caring for the world and animals, you shouldn't buy leather products, but the world is a strange world we buy. And then how come mold does not form on your sofa? Us, okay? If it is not kept clean, if it's always wet, if it's always warm, it will get moldy. So that's why we are asked to keep it clean. We are given leather conditioners, keep it more, keep it uh, clean all the time. And also it's easy to take care compared to our fabric so far. That's why we buy it. But hopefully we stop doing that. Okay. That's if we have some kind of ethics. Okay. Let's move on. If we have poisonous mushrooms. I have given you a question in the homework as well to ask you one where this girl found some mushrooms and she took it home and said she wants to eat it. 
And the question was, can she any kind of mushroom that she picks from anywhere? Though, as children, we can be eaten because we have them in the fridge. Okay. Cannot. Edible mushrooms from the supermarkets, the NTUCs, we know these are edible. Those that are not edible are not going to be sold in the supermarket. They are growing in the wild. An example here is the fly agaric, which is looks very much like from the story of strawberry shortcake. Okay, some kids, imagine you or guys are already how many at least? A five-year-old brother or sister looks at this, you'll probably think, strawberry! <laughs> I'm going to eat it. Okay, so you have to tell him or her how dangerous mushrooms that are poisonous can be. Cool? There you go. The scientific classification chart of fungi versus bacteria, which is the essence of today's lesson. Look at that. On top, I have put there fungi versus bacteria. And in the bottom, let's follow the laser pointer here. On the green side, we have the points that we have discussed. Harmful, food spoilage, danger of things, skin diseases, useful, okay, decomposer, source of food, food preparation, modern medicine, remember, the antibiotics, penicillin, and strengthen our immune system. This is useful for us to remember the uses and the harmful nature of fungi. Of course, on the right, some of you have really shifted your eyes to the right quickly, which is what? The usefulness and harmfulness of bacteria, which I don't want to show you, so I'm going to quickly... Okay, I don't want to show you. Why? Because we spend a good time looking at fungi. Not fair to bacteria if we don't look at them. Okay, we look at them for another good seven to eight minutes, and then we jump to the questions. I know you guys are eager to know the answers to the questions. Okay, so make sure you are still here. Okay, let's look at bacteria. Banana slices. Some of you said, I see banana slices. Where? The yellow ones. Because we eat too many banana chips. Okay. Spherical, spiral, shape and rod shape. This is all we need to know of bacteria. Actually, the name, some of you named me Bacillus. It is a type of bacteria that is good, which is found in your bottle of Yakult. Okay. There's a very long name for the Yakult bacteria, which you can find out also. But we are not going to test you all that. Like I said, we take things because we might need to know more names of bacteria, types of bacteria. So in this age group, 9 to 12 years old, very difficult to remember the names of the bacteria. So hence, we are not going to put you through that trouble. We just want you to know that or recognize that there are three shapes. And do we do ask you the MCQ question, how many shapes are there? Or name the odd shape out. Or which of these three are bacteria shaped? So you must know that bacteria can take three forms. One in the spherical form, one is the spiral form, and shape form. Now, this is the clear image taken from a microscope. Okay, how about if I ask you to draw a spherical, a spiral, and a rod? In your class, your teacher, science teachers may have asked you to do a sketch. Okay, you can do a 2D sketch of how a spherical, spiral, and rod shape looks like. If you do not know, it's time you took up your primary three textbook, your workbooks to see how you can draw. If you can't, okay, you can always message me on my WhatsApp and I will draw them for you individually. Okay, I'm not going to do it now. So let's see how many of you are really interested in WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number will be revealed at the end of the lesson, so stay tuned. Okay, some of you already know, I know. Write it in your whiteboard. Be on your bed, okay? Contact me anytime. Okay. Fungi versus bacteria. Now, these are not the usefulness, not the harmfulness. Make sure you know what you're talking about. We're not talking about harmful versus useful now, not yet. That was the chart just now. We're going to just talk about characteristics. Okay, what are the characteristics of these? Okay, let's see. You have another 10 seconds to read through. Anybody knows? Wow. Staphylococcus 
aureus, antibiotic resistant bacteria from James. Time's up. Yes, thank you. Who said time's up? Karen Narayanan said time's up. 10 seconds is up. Okay, so let's look at it together with the teacher here. Fungi versus bacteria in terms of characteristic, different shapes and sizes, three basic shapes. So do you need the cursor now? Yeah, better, right? So let's bring the laser pointer back. Now there you go. You have different shapes and sizes in fungi. Remember, you have more as what you call uh, mushrooms. All these examples are different, different shapes. We can't put them in spherical or conical shapes. Okay, now. I need you to type for me the three basic shapes of bacteria. Come on, three basic shapes. You need to write it down in one line. Three shapes of bacteria. Type it down all in one line. Don't type, don't type it. Don't type one and press enter. Okay, don't. I want one line. You can put a comma. Carry on. First person. Well, slow, man. Come on. Slow. First person. Nobody. 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 Yes. Yes. Square. Circle, square, wow, you tong. Don't let me embarrass you, you tong. It's not square, you tong. It's not circle. <laughs> what is the question? You, you guys didn't hear me? What are, okay, what, what are the three basic shapes? Okay, what are the three basic shapes of the bacteria that we just saw? Spiral, hey, nobody got the right answer. What is this? Spherical rod shape, yeah, we are getting there. Okay, if you don't know, that means the teacher has to go back one slide just to get you guys okay to remember what it was okay let me see okay you guys please have a look here okay this is important that's why i showed you and then tested you immediately if you can't remember it within one minute how can you remember it in december or in october when you're doing the final exams if I showed you the answer and you still cannot remember, how can you remember the answer in October? You can't, right? So, that's why the three basic shapes are spherical, spiral, and rod-shaped. Okay, let's go, move on quickly to the other condition, other characteristics. Fungi can grow well, here you go, in moist and warm conditions, and bacteria is the same. Okay, so there's one same here, so take note. Fungi can be visible by the naked eye except some. Type me the name that's the sum. Which sum do you think about? Otherwise was first. Otherwise. Mole. Hello. Mole can be seen by the naked eye. Except some. You know what is except? That means cannot be seen by the naked eye. Otherwise, east. Some say mushroom mole, okay. So let me put the answer straight out to you so you don't have misconception. Visible by the naked eye, except some. That means all fungi are visible by the naked eye. On the right side, bacteria are visible under microscope. Then you go back left side, except some. Some fungi are not visible with the naked eye. You do know what's the difference between naked eye and microscope, right? By now you should know. Naked eye means without any aid of a special equipment you can see it i can see my phone i can see my comb i can see my computer but can you see the bacteria on your computer you are on your computer and you are on your laptop and the screen can you see the bacteria on your keyboard no can you see the bacteria on your hands it's there can you see no that means you need special equipment to see the bacteria those of you who have been to science center to see through a microscope that's what i mean you need a special equipment therefore bacteria is only visible under microscope. Whereas fungi, you go into the kitchen now, if there's a moldy bread, you see the mold. So that's good to see under with the naked eye without bringing a microscope. <clears throat> okay. However, there's one type or two types of fungi which cannot be seen with the naked eye, and that's yeast. And that's the only one we require. There are others, but we just want you to know yeast as well. Okay, let's move on to the next. Characteristic, they reproduce from spores, they reproduce by binary fission. Okay, you don't need to know the word binary fission as long as you say they reproduce by multiplying. We accept that answer. Okay, where are they found? They are found in the habitat where their homes are. But bacteria, unfortunately, can be found everywhere. Exactly why I say it's on your laptop now, on your hand now, 
on your face, on your nose, everywhere. So you probably have to shower every minute in order to get rid of bacteria. But we can't. So we at least shower twice. Hopefully. Okay. Twice is good as well. If those of you who like to attract bacteria, you know your friends, right? Some of your friends like to attract bacteria. Okay. If you know those friends, that means you are the bacteria because you are, you are attracted to them. Okay. Now the last point is also important. Fungi do not make their own food we established this already in the when we compare the plants because they have no chlorophyll on the right side again this is important bacteria most cannot make their own food but some can make their own food by photosynthesis oh this is important to remember again i will emphasize this in the question and answer time when we look through the questions great <clears throat> all right I think I break, man. I've been just talking and talking, and you guys have not been talking. I'm not allowing you guys to talk because you guys are always saying nonsense when I let you talk. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Useful bacteria. <clears throat> not all bacteria, let me take a break. <clears throat> That's better. Okay. Not all bacteria are harmful and make us sick. Okay, so this useful bacteria, although we say yuck, you wow. Ooh, ooh. Okay, but there's bacteria in your yakut. There's bacteria in your yogurt. Felix said yogurt. Corey said yakut. Very good. Thank you. Okay, all of you know where the useful bacteria is. It's inside your fridge. It's inside your body as well. Do you know you have antibodies in your white blood cells? Those are fighting infections at the time. Okay, whenever you are sick, immediately the good bacteria comes along. It says, here I am. The army, the soldiers, they come in start to fight. So maybe bacteria is good as well. Remember, we're still on the topic of fungi as a bacteria. Maybe fungi, bacteria is going to be the winner. Okay, they are like guards. Okay, very good. I'm also at the same time reading responses from you guys. So keep them coming, no problem, because you guys are participating, no problem. Okay, they are useful bacteria that aid to turn milk into cheese and help in our digestion. So you guys are very familiar where the useful bacteria is. I saw all your responses. Harmful, however, can cause illnesses such as gastritis, diarrhea, and food poisoning. Okay, now this bacteria that's on your laptop, right now your fingers are touching them, picking up bacteria, and then you start scratching your nose, your eyes, and they get into your body. Okay, this bacteria that has not been in your body from the white blood cells obviously are going to be harmful, and that's why you can catch a cold, you can catch a fever because these bacteria are being sent into your body through your dirty hands where the bacteria is living on all these surfaces. So, hence, it's a very good idea to. Disinfect surfaces, clean all the time, your tables, your laptops. Sometimes I see your laptops. After eating, you type on your laptop. And then you go and wash your hands, but you didn't wash your laptop. The food is still on your laptop, right? So it's going to start growing fungus, bacteria, whatever it is, when, you have, when they have the right conditions. So you're going to find a very dirty laptop. Where else do you find bacteria? On food. You know, you eat your food and you take very long to eat. Your mommy is really angry that you are taking one hour to eat. By the time five minutes has passed since the food was cooked, it was hot, so the bacteria couldn't stay on it. But it's getting colder and colder and the bacteria is like, wow, that's inviting a lot of good food. It starts settling down. It starts sharing the food with you. And there you go. Bacteria is on your plate already. Eat your food quickly. Okay. The longer it takes on the, in the outside environment, bacteria is going to settle more and more. And then you will be eating this bacteria and that's when you get gastritis, food poisoning. And that's why when you eat outside in the restaurants, you can see the food is displayed outside for a very, very long time. Especially when you pick the food from the window, the glass, right? So the bacteria has been visiting the food already. And then you buy the food, you sit down and you have a good meal and you're putting all the bacteria in your body. You go home a day later, food poisoning. Okay, because the bacteria has gone into your body. A lot of cases we were saying, hey, but I ate the food and I didn't get any food for you. That's because the good bacteria in your body is fighting the infection already. So those of you who are weak, not able to fight the infection, then you get sick. So it's important to stock up on your vitamins for to keep your body always fighting against this infection. So don't eat out too much as well. Okay, so let's move on. Finally, you can see if fungi one or bacteria one. Now, final. Final, final. Oh, I never got food poisoning. Other was it. Okay, just be careful. Okay, never say never. Always be careful of what you eat. Okay. Right now, 
we are on a slide where we can take things to a decision. Okay, hands up if you say fungi won. <clears throat> Four, five, six. Okay, let's have a vote. Huh? Six. Okay. Hands up if wait, let's not finish this. Let's have oh okay, we get six. Okay. Let's hands up if bacteria one. That's just three, four, four. Okay. I know I have more than ten students here, right? Okay, six plus six plus four is 10. 10. 10 people responded for fungi. Five, six people said fungi, four people said bacteria, and then I added two more, another two more. Oh, six. Equal. Okay, I'm going to stop the vote here. Okay, let's go six, six. Six versus six is equal, right? So both didn't win. Okay, I know you guys say, I raised my hand, I raised my hand. Okay, never mind. We take this to another time where you can actually privately send me your vote. I will send, if you are interacting with me like this live uh, every week, then you can have more games and maybe I can bring on a voting system kind of a game where you just, you know, use your fastest finger and then see who wins the vote and you can see the chart of how it's going. Maybe next week we'll do that, okay? Deal? Okay, next week. Try to think through this week whether really it's fungi or bacteria and next week I will bring this tool and put on the slide and show you a chart, you know, like um, who wants to be a millionaire where you can see how many people voted for answer A, answer B, and so on? Maybe we should play that kind of game. Yeah? Okay, next week. Next uh, Wednesday, hopefully. Okay, so that's my homework. Okay, let's go on to something interesting. <clears throat> see, this attracts your attention, I know. Okay. This is ta -da, videos. Of course, you guys love to hit on the videos. Okay. But I can't hit on the video because of, but I can show you where my videos are. So I'm going to go quickly and see if I can share where I got these videos from so that you can go and find these videos yourself. So are you looking at the screen? Right. Did the screen change? Thumbs up if it did change so that I can carry on. Yeah, it changed. This is my website where, oh, you see me teaching science, actually all the lessons uh, whether it be uh, as fun as this one or not it's already been on the website for a very long time so i'm going to primary four i'm going to click details uh, you guys should do it by registering yourself if you haven't done so some of you are already students of mine and let's go to lesson number seven and click on fungi and bacteria okay and then let's look at microorganisms you see there are so many play videos when you play one of that there, you'll see me coming on teaching you stuff like what we did today. And also, if I click on this one and I say, restart, let's start. Oh, I don't think you can hear it, but I don't want you to hear it, even if you can or cannot. It doesn't matter. Okay, so if you have time, you can always what, go and look at that. Okay, so let me go back to where we were. Okay, so let's take a 30 minute, no, sorry, what 30 minute, 30 seconds break, and then I will go through the questions with you. So hopefully, you pick up a pen and a paper. For those of you who didn't, print out the questions, okay? You can just take down notes. Those of you who do have the paper, we will go through the questions in exactly 30 seconds. Is it time stop? Don't worry. 
I will start as soon as I can fix some of these lessons, uh, slides. Okay. Thanks, Dash, for keeping time. Okay, let's start. Okay, question one. Flowchart. Okay. How many of you, you, you can type the answer. Yeah, you can type the answer. So it gives me an idea of all of you getting it right or wrong. Then you can also discuss. If someone write, types the wrong answer, then I can just pick it up. If not, I can just move on because they are very, very easy. Is it A, B, C, or D here? Okay, my laser pointer is back. Here we are supposed to look at the question. So if we put all these questions into here, we will find out whether the answer is mole and fern according to a yes and no. Okay, since all of you already know that the answer is B, do they make food? How do you know that? Okay, because if you put that question, other questions will not satisfy the answer no mole and yes fern. okay so let's look at b do they make food okay obviously they are you must start from the left first okay living things do they have flowers okay then you're going to the right with a no so that means they do not have flowers they must come from the non-flowering plants so non-flowering plants means they don't have seeds okay so they can be ferns or mosses or fungi okay so do they make food? If they do make food, they are still part of the plants, but they don't have flowers. Okay, so they are not flowering. An example is a fern because they still make food, just not with what? Yeah, right, everybody said B. Yeah, I know B. Okay, so they still make food, but what? They don't. They don't have seeds. They have spores. Mole has spores too, but they come from fungi. Do they make food? No, so that's why the question should be do they make food? All right. The diagram shows two organisms A and B. Okay, some people made the following statements of organisms A and B. Okay, obviously, A you can see it's a plant already. You can see there's a stalk, there are leaves. But what type of plant is the problem now? Is it flowering or non-flowering? Okay, that's one question that should be floating in your mind. And on the right, straight away, all of you know is fungi, although you know it's mold. You know it's fungi. Okay, so some people made the following statements about organism A and B. Pupil P, pupil Q, pupil R. Who is right? Right? That's a question. Let's see pupil P. He says A and B are plants. Wrong. Pupil P is wrong. Okay. Pupil Q. A and B feed on other living things. Okay. And people are says A and B were produced from spores. Okay, so now you know P is wrong. Q, A and B feed on other living things. Is it right or wrong? Only the B feeds on other living things. A makes its own food because it's a plant. Okay, it makes its own food. So Q is also wrong. And A and B were produced from spores because it's look many of you ask me how come you know they reproduce from spores if r is also wrong then all three are wrong right so a and b reproduce from spores should be the only answer here because this is a fern and ferns have leaves that look like this so we are also testing on your ability to recognize the plant type which is a fern here so fern will have spores and mold has also got spores even though they come from different categories, they both have a spores. And so pupil R is correct, which is B answer. Okay. Shall we go on to the next one? All right, next one, next question. Four students, okay, made some comments about bacteria, not fungi. Make sure you remember is bacteria, not fungi. So now if you notice also, I chose the names as Ellen, Bala, Carl, and Dave. 
interestingly, they all begin with the letters A, B, C, D. If you notice those smart ones, you notice. Okay, those are very sharp, look, sharp guys or sharp girls here. Okay, bacteria are all harmful to human beings because they are not all harmful. We found that they are useful. Alan is wrong. Bala said, bacteria need air, food, and water to survive. All living things need air, food, and water to survive. All. So that's Bala is correct. Calm. Bacteria cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Yes, bacteria cannot be seen. What about fungi? Fungi can be seen with the naked eye, but some cannot. Ah, that's an exception, and that's yeast. You see, I always bring back to the topic that we discussed so that you actually understand. Finally, so Carl is correct also, right? Because bacteria is the only uh, organism that cannot, all of them cannot be seen by naked eye. You definitely need a microscope, and hence they are microorganisms. Finally, Dave said bacteria do not respond. Okay, now the key word is do not respond. Okay, here. Do not. Do they? Since bacteria is also part of the living thing. Remember, plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, all of them are in the living thing side of diversity. So all of them will have to satisfy the five or six conditions. What are they? They need air, food, and water. They grow. They respond to changes. They reproduce and so on. So they should all satisfy. So when here it comes as bacteria, do not respond. Then you must think, hey, but it's a living thing. It must respond. So Dave, you are wrong. So only Bala and Carl are correct, which is C. Bala and Carl is correct. Okay, C. Now, are you marking along? Okay, if those of you have done the question, you can along. So don't take your eyes off the slide. I'm not even writing the answers down. You have to hear what I say as the answer. Okay. Of course, if you miss it out, you can always find a recorded version of this on the YouTube. Okay. The following statements about bacteria are not true. Okay. This question did not appear in your homework. That's why there's an asterisk or a hex sign three there because this is another question. Give yourself right now, right now, right now. Answer your. Give me your answers now. Okay, it's exactly the same as the previous question, but just phrased differently. There's no Alan, Carl, and Bala here. Okay, all we ask is directly which of the following is not true. Again, you are to pick out this. I'm going to bring my cursor here. Not true. So many of you find difficulty answering the question when you don't pick out the keyword. Okay, is it going to be, do they want the true or the false? We could have said false here. But you didn't say false, you said not true, which is the same as false. That's why you see my heading, it says not true or false, but not true. Okay, so you're supposed to read it like that. Not true or false, but not true. Okay, this is a question that says not true. So students get tend to make a mistake when they find this kind of a statement in a question and they do not know where to get the answer from because they don't know if it's true or false. You must change this not true to false. So answer here is B. Okay, those of you who got B, I saw Bs today, so I didn't see any other answers. All of you did very well. Okay, let's move to the next question. Okay, now here you're supposed to compare, to compare the two organisms. One is a mushroom, one is a bacteria. Now we only did fungi versus bacteria today. So where does mushroom come from? Come from fungi, right? So we must know that mushroom is from the category category of fungi in order to compare. Then we go to the right hand side and look at the question, which of the following statements about the two groups, fungi and bacteria, are true. So we know an idea of fungi and bacteria already. We just need to pick out the right statement because this here again is true, okay? True. Both have gills? No, only mushrooms have gills. So A is not true. It must be true about the two groups. Both can reproduce? Definitely, all living things reproduce it's just a different way they reproduce in which way you will take b as the correct answer both need air food and water to survive very straightforward of course so b and c is true 
answer is C. Okay, no questions there. I think all of you are, did very well on question four. Now, Jack, this is a fair experiment, right? So Jack put what? What did he put? He put something. What is that? Conducted if amount of warm affect the growth of bacteria, okay? On an empty plate. That means there's nothing actually. Bacteria was grown in identical dishes and placed in three different places. Okay, and the diagram shows that amount of bacteria after five days. Okay, five days later, we're just going to see if bacteria grows more in cold places or hot places. Why? Because he's just saying, look at my cursor here. Okay, it says find out if the amount of warmth, whether it's warm or cold, affects the growth of bacteria. That means the test is or the, 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 the condition that he's changing is the amount of warmth. So he will make one warm, one cold, one not so warm, not so cold. That's what he did. And he will see the effect or the effect. The effect is the growth of the bacteria, which is the measurement of how many or how much bacteria grows. So I think straight away you guys can see that A, bacteria are harmful to us. Very hard to see. Is it harming Jack? No, you can't tell. Bacteria cannot make their own food. Can you see they're making own food? No, here is a case of reproduction. They are multiplying. They are not making their own food. Okay, bacteria cannot make their own food. It cannot be seen from this experiment because what can be concluded from the experiment is the question. Look at the can be concluded. So it's on or D. Okay, to do with the climate, whether it's cold or warm. Cooler condition increase bacteria or warmer condition increase bacteria. I think from our mind we already know warmer condition will. But his test, Jack's test over here, has also showed that here in the warmest condition in the garden grows the most number of bacteria. So D. Okay. Next question. The table below shows how four organisms are grouped. Okay. Here we just need to find out where moss comes from. Hello, moss. How are you? We looked at plants, we looked at fungi, we looked at bacteria, then we looked at ferns. And I also told you one of the good partners of fern is a moss. Moss is taken in the same category as the fern. So if you know everything about the fern, you know everything about the moss. Is that okay? Clear? Okay, good. Means the moss comes from plants which are non flowering, they can make food and they make uh, reproduce from spores. Okay, they reproduce from spores. So therefore, they can make its own food is definitely true. It should be in this column. Can you see my cursor? And on this side, they can reproduce by seeds? No, because they do not have flowers. They are not flowering. They are the same as ferns. Mosses and ferns do not reproduce from seeds. Okay, so they reproduce from spores. And the answer is G. So write down G as your answer. Okay, no, don't write down G as your answer. Write down C as your answer. Okay, many of you are getting very too excited to write G. We will mark you wrong even though G is the right answer because we ask you to choose the options A, B, C, D. Okay? Excitement takes over you. All right. Hmm. Let's see how many questions do we have left. This is the previous question. Next slide. Okay. Seven. Okay. This is another fair experiment. We only need to look at the cursor again. He wants to find out if, um, uh, let me go very slowly, like uh, um, uh, of water, amount of water yeah, affects the growth of bread moon. Again, just like how he grew bacteria just now, somebody grew jack, right? Timothy wants to see how fast mold can grow on bread by adding more water and less water. So he needs to control the water. So the question is, which variable should he keep the same? He cannot keep the amount of water the same because the amount of water is what he must change more or less. So here, when you come to the options, A, amount of water, okay, which variable should he keep the same? Is it amount of water? Here is tick, here is tick, here is tick, when it's not supposed to be tick. So my answer will be A because it's not tick here. The rest of them, the type of bread, the location, the 
size of bread must be kept the same because I only want to change the amount of water so I have a fair experiment. Remember, we have done many fair experiments, especially you guys who are from primary 5, primary 6. Very clever at this. P3, P4, you need a lot of practice. You need to decide for yourself what is it that in your experiment, always take yourself to be the jack or the timothy. And you want to find out the amount of water affects the growth of bread mold. So you change the amount of water only. Okay, you put less, less water, more water. But the rest, okay, don't change the bread type, don't change the, where the place is, don't change the type of bread, the size of bread and everything. So those are the conditions that you have to keep constant. Therefore, we take all three here and say, A is the answer. Okay, study the flow chart and you have organisms. This time, answer not the question. So I think you guys got the right answer here. Very easy. Which of the following represents a fern? Now we've done fern and moss a lot today. That's because when I started the lesson, I said, in fungi and bacteria, it's easy for us to catch you on certain concepts. And the concepts we like to catch you on is the fern and the moss because they somehow have spores. And students tend to believe if they have spores, they have to be part of fungi. So that's where you have to be really clear headed and think fern is a part of plants and it's non flowering. Therefore, when you find out which part fern is, it is actually W, okay? Because it will have a stem as a plant, it will have green leaves, but when it comes to flowers, the last question, it does not have flowers. So you'll say no and you go to W. Answer C. The table below shows Burns answers to three questions about yeast. Ah, many. Now, P5, P6, this question is for you. Okay, of course, P3, P4 is for you. So, but P5, P6, if you're an expert in science, you must get this right. Those of you who have not tried my homework, try it now. Okay, Burn is answering three questions. He's supposed to answer, is it a bacteria? Yeast is not bacteria, it's fungi. And he said no. Okay, so Burn is correct. Can he reproduce? All living things can reproduce. He must say yes. So Burn is wrong on this question. Is it a microorganism? Since yeast can only be seen by a microscope, so it's a microorganism, it's a yes. So you can write your own answers on the right hand side and compare with Burn's answers. And if he got them right, then you can say, oh Burn, you got A and C right. B, you got it wrong. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do. Which questions were answered correctly by Burn? Only A and C. B, he answered it wrongly. He put the wrong answer. So you are becoming a teacher here. You're marking Burns' answers. Okay, that's the beauty of this question. It's a multi-processor question as I put here because you have to think through a lot of steps to get to the answer. Okay, not only do you need to know the answer, you need to see if Burn got the answer. That's what I mean by multi-processor. Okay, we will take just, I guess, just over six minutes now to finish this lesson because I have just three structured questions and I believe Okay, let me just put this out to you. Structured questions are usually more, much easier than MCQs because MCQs, we have alternative answers like B, C, D options to actually confuse the student. But in structured questions, if you know it, you know it, you can write it down and you can just go ahead and say, I know the answer. There's no confusion. All you need to know is the concepts. So this one, I know all of you named A as the spores. Very good. Okay, spores. Some students, recommended okay we always look for the answer called spores even though it's spore bag there are spores inside the spore bag so we're looking for the spores in the underside of the leaf because spores are the reproductive function of the leaves we only teach you spores we don't teach you spore bag so this is called misconception if you have a battle between these two just write spores okay unless you can see the bag and the teacher is going to teach you back so this one you can clarify with your teacher in class okay just to make sure I'm saying the right thing as well because I don't know how your science teacher is teaching you whether I will teach it as spores. Okay, just to clear it up. Now, B, Alice pointed out that fern can be grouped under fungi. Do you agree with her? Give a reason. What is the answer? I don't agree. First, you say I don't agree because this is a fern and cannot be fungi, it's still under plants. Again, we come back, back to fung fungi fern, fungi fern, plants, fungi fern again. So this is over done already. The reason why I'm overdoing it is because you need to take this point home. Okay, really, really remember this. This will be tested extensively. Finally, of course, Alice's mother told her that the fern is a non-flowering plant. Besides not 
having flowers, how can Alice tell that fern is a non-flowering plant? Okay, other than you will see there it's non-flowering. Okay, it's non-flowering also because it doesn't reproduce through seeds, it reproduces through spores. Okay, all flowering plants will reproduce through seeds. So that's why it is a non-flowering plant. Okay, penultimate question. That means one question before the end. State how fungi obtain their food. Okay, obtain their food. Remember, fungi, they feed on dead organisms to get their food, right? So you have to write, oh, fungi obtain their food through living things. Is it dead or is it alive? Ah, dead or alive, okay? Dead organisms. Alive, oh, okay, they can grow on your body, I told you. So it doesn't mean only when you're dead, you have fungi on your body, like as we have mentioned a lot. Fungi can go and try and get food from your body as well. Remember, okay, so remember this. Okay, if you haven't done this worksheet and you're only here to learn the lesson, maybe you should try the worksheet after this lesson, okay? So the fungi get their food from the dead um, log as well. Some of you answered it as, Dead log because you answered specific to the question because you saw dead log. We will accept this answer as well. Okay, you can either answer it generally where all fungi get their food from living things dead or alive, or the fungi got this food from the dead log, which I see here. That's fine too. Okay. So fungi, can it be eaten? Ria is very curious. She wants to bring it home and eat to cook because she saw it. It's like a mushroom, okay? Do you think it's a good idea? No, because it could be poisonous, it could be harmful, all right? I think this, guy, this part is also very clear. Final question, we are going to be done, okay? I'm also tired, you're also tired, and you have a maths lesson after this. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I will join in the maths lesson, hopefully, maybe. Okay, let's disturb Burn a bit. Okay, which bread, A or B, will most likely have more mold growing on it after five days? Condition time, you just need it to be moist and warm okay so it's more moist or more warm so this question is all about dry bread moist bread so the condition is only talking about moist versus dry huh? nothing else so you're supposed to pick the answer from the diagram here so which bread will grow explain the answer it will grow more mold because it's moist on bread b okay and two other things that the mold need will be warmth Okay, and food and air, of course. Why didn't I write water? Why didn't I write water? Anybody? Yeah, moist already means water. Very good. Thank you, Adirva. Arya, okay. Moisture in question A already refers to the mold requiring water. So I don't, then they said B, other two conditions. So that's why you guys got caught here as well. If you wrote water here, then it's not another two conditions compared to A. Got it? Okay, so you have to pick other conditions that you know of. Finally, Anita then said, this mold belongs to a group of fungi and all fungi are microorganisms. What's wrong? It does belong to a group of fungi. Mold does. Okay, so she said one statement, right? The second statement, she said that all fungi are microorganisms. Wrong, because we learned that my, microorganisms can only be seen by microscope. This fungi growing on bread, mold, can be seen or with the naked eye, right? Only yeast cannot be seen. Ah, now you know this other exception. So we talked about fungi, bacteria, ferns, mosses. Then we talk about in the fungi section, we talk about microorganisms and yeast in particular. So do you see where we have tied things up and what are the things that you need to take note of? I would say the most three important things that you need to take note of is the fern, the moss, and the yeast. If you know where they are in the diversity, whether they are in the fungi, bacteria, plant, or the non-flowering soil, you will be fine. Okay? You need to know the properties. Are we done? Very good. Because some fungi can be seen with the naked eye. Okay. Tayyip Ali wants to go and rest. And maybe I'll come in and see Burns' lesson. And you guys take a break and see me later in next week's lesson. And as I promise, I hopefully can organize a voting session and also have it more fun than today, okay? And this is my WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp the question in relation to today's lesson. Give me some comments on what we should do next week. And uh, we can always stay in touch through this number, okay? See you, bye-bye.
Yeah.